for all of our fans on TikTok and Instagram. I appreciate you checking out our YouTube channel. Um, please subscribe and like the videos. I really appreciate it. Now, like I said, we had a home invasion. We woke up at three o'clock in the morning with a guy with a wearing a hood staying in our bedroom. Let me tell you how that shook out. We had been to the PPL finals in Wheatland, Missouri and uh, drove all the way back, barely stopped. We did stop to eat, not too far from the house. And uh, at the time we were living in a set of vision, renting a place uh, till we had this place that we're in now done. And uh, we were traveling a semi at the time. So I dropped the family off at the house and uh, they went in through the front door. And then I took the semi and trailer back to our warehouse and I drove home in our Jeep and went in through the garage. Well, when they went in through the front door, it was already pretty late, around 11 o'clock or so. They didn't lock the front door back thinking that I was going to be coming in the front door. But I didn't. I came in through the garage and uh, left the front door unlocked. It wasn't open. It was just unlocked. Now, we live in Nicholsville, Kentucky. And Nicholsville, Kentucky barely has any crime. And home evasions in this part of the country are almost non-existent. Probably that it wasn't some old people that they knew had a bunch of prescription drugs or had a hundred thousand dollars stuffed in their mattress or another drug dealer. Uh, home invasions probably have never happened really, certainly in this part of the country. Now they happen in Chicago and New York where they have gun laws, but you don't hear about that on the news, <laughs> but they don't happen here because almost everybody has a gun, including me, but they did. So three o'clock in the morning, <clears throat> my wife wakes up, looks in our master bedroom. Now, I am laying with my back to the door of the bedroom. My, our bed runs perpendicular to the door. So the guy came in the bedroom, looked right at us. Uh, I had my back to him. And my wife, I was uh, spooning my wife, so she had her back to him as well. She was facing the wall. So he saw us in the bed. He goes in the, in the bathroom. Well, when he goes in the bathroom, my wife wakes up, doesn't realize I'm sort of laying behind her because we were exhausted from the trip, and sees what she thought was me in the bathroom with a flashlight. And so she was laying there wondering, well, what the hell is he doing in the bathroom with a flashlight in the middle of the night? So the guy comes out of the bathroom and then walks into our closet. And when, she, when he did that, she realized it wasn't me. So here's a guy with a hood on, standing in our closet, and my wife, you know, was watching him, and she's laying there wondering, what do I do? You know, do I scream? Do I lay here and play like I'm asleep? Do I wake Marty up? You know, what do I do? Well, she, uh, the guy comes out of the closet, he has a cell phone in his hand with a cell phone light on, and starts coming towards the bed. Well, when he does that, she made the decision to wake me up and she wakes, she wakes me up and she goes, there's a man in our bedroom. And, uh, I said, what? And like I say, I was tired. It's three o'clock in the morning. I was completely exhausted. And, uh, so I roll over and when I roll over, this guy comes over to the edge of the bed and he sticks his light right in my face. And, uh, <laughs> needless to say, that was a scary feeling, but um, and I was dead asleep when this happened. So I jump up and, uh, call him every name I could possibly think of. You worthless piece of shit, motherfucker. I'll shoot you so full of fucking holes. And I reached in our nightstand and grabbed my gun. And luckily the gun was in the nightstand. Now I'll get back to the gun being in the nightstand in a minute. But I chased the guy at the front door. This younger guy, white guy, taller than I am. And I'm almost six two which is, we didn't know anybody fit that description. He runs out the front door, runs down the driveway, which was straight in front of the front door at this house and uh, started shooting. And, uh, but my, I was pointing straight at my neighbor's house and I didn't, and, but I chased him, <laughs> not wearing any clothes at all. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Chased him through my neighbor's yard and uh, he jumped the fence and started running through the brush and I was in no position to be running through any brush in, so I ran back to the house, and by the end, the wife had already called the cops, and they were just up the street, so they showed up, 
And, uh, <clears throat> you know, they checked out the rest of the house for us, make sure there wasn't another guy, which I'll also get back to in a second. And there wasn't. And then they asked us to, you know, who was it? And of course we didn't know. And we didn't have any employees at the time that were taller than I was and really didn't know anybody uh, that fit that description at all. And, uh, but they were just convinced that we were going, that we should know who that person was. So they went out looking for him, that sort of thing. And, uh, they had me put my gun down <laughs> and get dressed. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, so that's, uh, so that's how they shook out. It scared my wife to death. You know, we moved out not too long after that, moved to another rental house while we were remodeling the place we're in now. And, uh, it was, she was absolutely scared of this. She's just, Still scared of this. She, when if I'm not home, especially after it gets dark, she sits and with a gun in her lap. Um, and uh, we have several more guns than we had at the time. There's never one within more than three or four feet of me, no matter where I am, because of that situation. Now the gun in the nightstand. My dad always told me keep a gun in your nightstand. Tell your kids if you have any, that you'll break their arm if they reach in that nightstand drawer and mean it. And I'm in it. And that gun and that nightstand saved my life and my family's life. As I'm completely convinced of that. If it hadn't been for me reaching for a gun, that guy wouldn't run out of the, of the bedroom. I was, like I said, dead asleep, and I was in no position to fight. <laughs> I, probably what I said to him came out like, oh, yeah, yeah. it didn't come out like I thought it did, I'm certain. But a crazy naked man, <laughs> nobody wants to fight. So one of the two, the gun or me being naked or me <laughs> slurring my words, one of them saved, uh, saved our lives. And uh, it, we were very, very, very lucky. So if you want to protect yourself, uh, number one, live in a place where you can have guns. The, uh, these home invasions are very prevalent in the Chicago area, New York, other places where they have gun laws. But they don't, they don't tell you that on television, but they are. We ran into the guy that does personal safety for FBI agents at our mall store that later that year. And uh, that was what he told us. He said, there's, there's, it's getting really, really bad out there. But, uh, you know, you got to protect yourself where you can. Anyway, so keep a gun in a nice stand. That safe in the closet, you know, with your combination, all that sort of deal. <laughs> that is worthless. Absolutely, positively worthless. At that point, I probably couldn't even remember the conversation, the, the combination, much less got to the closet. Now, when you, this gun, I had a 38 special. The guy from the FBI told me that in that situation, everybody shoots six times. And usually there's two of them. And you waste your six, six shots. Hopefully you hit the guy. Most of the time you don't. And then you have to fight the second guy. You don't want to do that at three o'clock in the morning, especially the guy younger and bigger than you are. So get you a Glock that holds at least 12 shells. Make the first six of them hollow points and the second six full metal jackets. Out of that first six, you hope you hit him and you hope you hurt him. And that second six full metal jackets is if he hides behind the counter. You can shoot through the counter and get him. I always thought, you know, I've got all these guns around. If there was a situation where I had to shoot somebody, could I actually shoot somebody? Well, I found out. Sure can. Sure can. Now that gun saved my life. And the, and the, the guns being in people's homes are saving your lives. Usually people won't break in a home, especially if they think you're there because afraid to get shot in the face. Some guy breaks in my home again, they're gonna get shot in the face. Did you get a chance to shoot that guy, but I'd shoot him in a second if I, found, I saw him right now, I don't care where I saw him. If you're out there and you see this video, you send me a message, I'll meet you somewhere. Anyway, uh, cause they never did catch the guy. I have no idea who it was, um, absolutely no idea. But, um, which is usually the case. You know, they usually don't, don't find these home invaders. There's just, they said probably somebody just walking down the street, opening doors. Uh, we did find some footprints in our mulch. I think the guy in our case might've been casing. 
because we'd been gone for several days and that was just the night that he decided to come back to go in the house. Uh, but uh, anyway, so that's how it shook out. Um, you know, I, I, I said in my video, if you saw this on TikTok or Instagram, we make this sign that we give away for free. And it's, it's a yard sign you put it in front of your house and it says gun free zone, repeal the second amendment. If you want one, I'll send you one absolutely free. If you don't want one, then shut up. All right, this can happen to you. If it happens in Nicholsville, Kentucky to me, I'm not a drug dealer. I don't have a bunch of cash laying around and I don't take prescription drugs. If it can happen to me, it can happen to you. It can happen to anybody. And when it does happen, you're gonna want a gun for protection, especially now that you're seeing what's happening in Texas. If somebody breaks in your home and you're in force enough to be able to call the police, police are gonna show up, they're gonna set up a perimeter and they're gonna call for backup. All the while, that guy's gonna be in there torturing you and your family, your children, until the cops get there. It won't be pretty. And gun control folks, it just keep the Democrats worried that you're gonna shoot them, not other people, not, other, not schools, so forth. The Second Amendment is our right to carry guns to protect yourself. In this world, yourself is the only person you can rely on for protection right now. You absolutely positively have to have the right to have a gun. You guys have a great day and drive diesel.